Come on, Ginge. All right, guys, just got home a little bit later than I really wanted to, but we're going to jump on the four-wheeler, me and Ginger. He's coming. <laughs> uh, we're going to jump on the four-wheeler. We're going to go back in the field, check the hay. Let's we'll see how it's drying. Uh, it's 5 o'clock. Obviously, we're not going to be doing anything today, bailing-wise. But we're going to be doing stuff. But Come on, Ginger, just get on the four-wheeler, girl. Uh, <clears throat> but I want to go see and go back and see how it's drying. And... Hopefully it's drying well, and basically what my goal is, I'm going to check it out, and if I think it's going to be able to bail tomorrow, then I'm going to be raking uh, basically as soon as the dew is off tomorrow, so I can get it flipped up, and the stuff that's on the bottom can be flipped up and can be drying there, so we'll be able to bail, uh, and hopefully, my plan is I'm going to round bail tomorrow for sure. Hopefully I'll be able to square bail. And hopefully, if I end up doing that, I'll get all that done tomorrow. And then, uh, this is Tuesday, so that'll be Wednesday. Then come Thursday, the plan would be to uh, do dads. Uh, once he gets going bailing, I'll be running the stacker. I'll be moving the stacker over there once I'm done with it here. And we'll be, uh, hopefully, putting some hay away. I was just adding up the acres. We actually have 65 acres of hay on the ground right now, which is probably the most we've ever had down at one time in a very long time, a very long time, uh, especially with the amount of ramp, square bailing that we're planning on doing. That's a lot for us. We're a small operation. So uh, I'm both excited and nervous. Uh, we haven't used Dad's bailer at all, really. So hopefully it goes well. All right, let's go check this hay out. What do you think, Jen? Do you think it'll bail tomorrow? It's drying pretty well, guys, really. If I had the tether here, I'd go ahead and tether it again. But this right here, this stuff here, it's going to bail tomorrow. We'll rake it. There's a little bit of uh, stem moisture stuff going on here. But I think it's going to be pretty dry tomorrow after we rake it. And I got the preservative applicator. Uh, it's working. Ooh, this is a little bit greener. I don't know if you can tell how much greener that is. Uh, it's pretty good. Of course, this is, so this was more like second cutting stuff because it's so short and leafy. So this tether doesn't spread it as good. Uh, it does fluff it still. But the first thing I flipped up was this spot right here. And I know you can tell how green that is. And uh, I was very nervous when I flipped that up there. But that's the only piece like that I've seen. That was a fluke thing, I guess. Let's see what this one looks like. So, anyways, I think we're going to go ahead and rake tomorrow. I'm going to go check my east field. I think it's going to be even better than this, drying-wise. It just seems like it clumps it more when it's shorter like this. See that? There's. And if it doesn't bail, we got plenty of drying time. I'll just have to flip it. The plan is going to be, I'm going to still look at the other hay, but we're going to rake tomorrow as soon as the dew gets off so it has as much time to dry as possible. If it doesn't bail, we'll just have to flip it again Thursday. I think most of it will bail. I'm ready to use the new moisture monitor, the Agritronics moisture monitor. So that'd be pretty exciting. All right, let's go look at my field and then the back field and we'll head over to Dad's. All right, guys, so this field's drying really good. Actually, if I had raked it today, it'd probably bail today. Uh, but that's good. Now I know it'll bail tomorrow.
All right, guys, this back here is going to bale too. So we're a thumbs up a go to bale at least 22 acres tomorrow. I think the neighbors will dry as well. Once I get it raked, it'll do a lot of drying after it's raked. So uh, good news. Good news. Come on, James. Come on, girl. We're going to head to the house so we can get everything gathered up and head over to Dad's. We're going to calibrate his candy box. So uh, come along. All right, James. You want to erase me? Ready? Set, go, come on. She's missing a leg, but I only got two to start with. I don't think she knows this race either. Cause we are I am the champion. In your face, girl, in your face. She's been running a little bit more too. All right, let's roll. All right guys, so it's starting to get a little dark, but we got the moisture monitor mounted up here. Actually just mounted right to a screw, existing screw there. Uh, that was really about the only thing we had besides drilling a bunch of holes or something. Probably would have been better maybe right here, but it would interfere with the side here. So, but this is the side you'll be looking out of anyway, so not a huge deal. Uh, and then this is the switch for the Gandy box. I got a fuse block down here that I powered from the existing power supply to the cab. So... With the key off, it shuts power off to everything. Turn the key on, and I've got uh, it's fuse protected as well as a fuse that's in line with this thing. I've got the monitor, I've got the bale, uh, the round baler monitor hooked up, as well as the Gandy box hooked up to the same thing. So, <clears throat> Dad's loading. We're getting ready to uh, we're gonna kick it on and time it. Dump a certain amount into the pan. We'll weigh it, and uh, we're gonna do that on a few different settings. Kind of make a little chart. And that'll give us uh, a range of things, you know, for different. Then we'll just have to kind of time how it takes us to bail a certain amount of bales. So that's the plan. All right. So Dad's got half a bag in. And we've got the tubes hooked up. So it will actually be flowing like it will when we're bailing. Also, uh, anyone who's got one of these, if you got this here in the way where the, the lid won't, won't uh, stay up, I did a little MacGyver thing here and tie the washer onto the end of a piece of twine and you can pull that through there and it'll hold it on the washer so here's where the tubes are we just got them hanging here for now if we got to trim them up so they don't interfere with something we will but I don't th I think they'll be okay time will tell so that's got two pans so we can just do two runs without having to run back to the scale every time we're gonna run it for two minutes we're on fit number uh, 15 for the setting uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on, and we're going to get it just to feed out, and then we're going to stop. That way we'll we'll start and make sure that it's actually feeding right. Uh, we're going to do this a few times, and we'll go to another setting and do that, and then we can kind of have a good range of settings for whenever we're in the field. That was two minutes. Yeah, let's do two runs of each setting. That way we have some repeatability just to... Huh? Okay. And... Go. There's the time. This time around, at least. So what we're going to do is we'll do two runs of this. We'll go away. They're probably going to be so close that our scale can't tell the difference between the two, but we'll have a number. Then we'll turn the setting up. We're not going to go one number at a time. We'll probably go, so we're on 15, we'll probably go up to 20, and then 25, and then 30. And, uh, as long as <clears throat> we can see the, whether it's linear or if it's some sort of a uh, you know, a power increase or something, I can put it on a chart and actually chart it out without having to do every single number but uh, that'll give us a good estimate for so like if we do 15 20 25 and 30 then we should be able to connect the points and know about what it is at each of those settings in between there is what I'm saying so that's the plan all right guys so here's a couple more pallets that dad made 
see how they work. Try it. We put a few more, few fewer bolt boards in to make them as light as possible for handling. And uh, we got all our numbers written down. Uh, I will uh, post. I'll put you a picture in here. Of what I came up with I'm gonna put it all on a spreadsheet and uh, make like a little cheat sheet card to keep in the tractor to try to make it as quick as possible to make adjustments based on what your throughput is is really the main factor we're, we're kind of shooting for two pounds per ton is what you're gonna shoot for up to 20% moisture so that's kind of the range we're in and we'll go from there <laughs> 